Sima Samar, a biography of a brave woman. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ahmed Media. Before continuing, don't forget to subscribe, like and share with your friends and be sure to watch until the end. Enjoy! When Dr. Simon Samar was born in Jaghri Ghazni, Afghanistan on the 3rd of February 1957, she seemed to have the odds stacked against her as both a woman and as a Hazara, one of the most persecuted minorities in Afghanistan. Yet it's exactly these circumstances that caused her to put both her life and liberty at risk, as she is continually striven to be a voice for the disenfranchised. Dr. Seema Samar is one of the most influential people in the world, advocating for other women and minority groups. Her humanitarian pursuits have not come without serious risk to her life, and yet Dr. Seema Samar has never deterred her efforts. As quoted in the Afghanistan Foreign Policy and Government Guide, she once stated, I've always been in danger, but I don't mind. I believe that we will die one day, so I said to myself, let's take the risk and help somebody else. Dr. Seema Samar grew up as a member of Afghanistan's Hazara minority with 10 siblings and a polygamist father. Attending school in Lashkargah, Dr. Seema Samar began speaking out for women's rights as early as the 7th grade. Dr. Seema Samar's father would not let her attend university unless she agreed to an arranged marriage. She accepted marriage to Abdul Ghafur Sultani on the terms that he let her study medicine. She received a medical degree in 1982 from Kabul University, a career chosen based on her desire to make a positive difference in Afghanistan. She was the first ever Hazara woman in Afghanistan to do so. One night in 1978, 10 men broke into Dr. Sima Summer's home and kidnapped her husband and his three brothers. They were among the 500 educated people kidnapped during the Russian invasion, never to be seen or heard from again. In 1984, oppressive Russian forces forced Dr. Seema Samar to flee to Pakistan with her young son. She stayed there for the next 17 years, dedicating herself to aiding other Afghan refugees. During her 17 years in Pakistan, she became a leader in educating Afghan women and also girls. She founded the Shahada organization, which now operates 55 schools for girls and boys in Afghanistan and three schools for Afghan refugees in Quetta, Pakistan. By 1987, Dr. Seema Samar helped open the first hospital for women. Staffed by women in Pakistan, she also set up education programs for girls in the country. She did this despite opposition from conservative leaders in Pakistan and limited funding. Now, the Shahada organization was established in 1989. It is a non-profit that strives for a prosperous, democratic, and socially just Afghanistan with an emphasis on empowering women and children. Founding the Shahada organization was dangerous for Dr. Seema Samar because it directly opposed the uncompromising Taliban regime that seized control of Afghanistan in 1994. She did not let death threats or public condemnation dishearten or scare her. During the Taliban regime, Shahada schools in central Afghanistan were among the few academic girls' primary schools. The organization's girls' high schools were the only high schools that girls were able to attend in the country. The Shahada organization also ran underground homeschool classes for girls in Kabul. Following the collapse of the Taliban, these homeschool classes became the basis for two above-ground schools for the girls that now teach 800 students. After the collapse of the Taliban in 2001, from December 22, 2001 until June 22, 2002, Dr. Seema Samar served as the Deputy Chair and Minister of Women's Affairs for the Interim Administration of Afghanistan. As the first ever Afghan Minister of Women's Affairs, she oversaw the re-entry of girls into schools and women into the workforce. During this very short administration, she established the first ever Afghanistan Ministry of Women's Affairs. Among other accomplishments, the ministry won the right of women government employees to return to their jobs and to keep their seniority oversaw the re-entry of girls to schools, launched a women's rights legal department, and opened a school for married girls, offering tailoring, literacy, and embroidery courses at the ministry's headquarters. She has been recognized for her leadership and courage by dozens of human and women's rights organizations globally, and she continues her work in Afghanistan. She also has served as the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Sudan from August 2005 till June Nine. Dr. Seema Samar has been recognized and rewarded by numerous human rights and women's rights organizations internationally and was named Forbes' 28th Most Powerful Women in 2006. 
She has paid a heavy price for her commitment on a personal level. Yet, despite the difficulty, she is happy with the work she does. She has said in the past that her work may be only a drop in the ocean, but at least she feels that the drop is something positive. While Dr. Seema Summer has paid a high price for her achievements, these facts reveal her success as a humanitarian and activist. She demonstrates the influence, change, and progress one person can achieve. She is truly a woman to be celebrated. One last thing that I wanted to say was that even though she was just a helpless woman, she was able to make schools and she put her own life in danger for the benefit of others. Education, in my opinion, is the basis of any country. It allows people to be able to advance and move forward. And some groups of extremist men try to destroy her work, that she has spent her time, effort, and life trying to voice out thousands of helpless and voiceless girls and also the minorities in Afghanistan. What do you guys think of her? Let us know down in the comments below. This was another video from Ahmed Media. Have a great day and a fantastic one.